Hey guys, it's Melanie. Happy Tuesday. Uh, we are doing another sunscreen related video. Um, if you missed it, about a month and a half or so ago, I did a collab with my lovely friend Penny from over at Pensmith Skincare, and we shared several sunscreen suggestions each. Um, based on our skin type and luckily Penny and I have a completely different skin type she has more dry um, mature skin whereas I have oily mature skin so um, the types of sunscreens that we both tend to gravitate towards tend to be a little bit different I feel like we have some overlap but for the most part um, finding sunscreen for oily skin can be tricky, just like I'm sure it can be finding a sunscreen for dry skin. So my hope in this video today is to introduce you to a couple more sunscreen products that will work for you if you are like me and you deal with either very oily skin, oily skin, combination skin, or even normal skin I feel like could benefit from these particular products. I also have a flop for you guys, so a product that I tested that did not work out for me, but that I know works for a different skin type because I gave it to my mom and it works for her. So we'll talk about that one when we get to it. So I will of course be linking everything down below for you in the description box. So if you want to know where to find these SPFs, um, the information will be down there. Um, also, I will link the original SPF video collab that both Penn and I did so that um, if you missed that one, you can go back and reference it if you're interested. I also did a SPF for the body video um, a few weeks ago. If you missed that one, I will link that down below because I know some of you in the original video were asking about, well, what about the body? So that video is on my channel as well. That will be in the description box down below for you to reference. Um, SPF to me is very, very important. Um, I think I, I spend a lot of money on skincare and the very best thing that you can do for your skin besides being consistent and taking good care of it and buying the products that are right for your skin is to actually wear sunscreen. Because here's the thing, you can spend all the money you want on skincare, but if you don't protect your skin from the sun at the end of the day, none of this other stuff is going to matter because you're just going to undo the good that you're doing each time that you go out into the sun. Now, we all need the sun. We need the vitamin D. You don't need to, I think, overdo it with sunscreen, but I do think you need to be vigilant about it and you need to wear it on a daily basis. Um, and enough of it to actually protect your skin. So make sure that when you are applying it to your face and your neck that you are applying the appropriate amount. Um, I'll put an article down below that will link you to the correct amount of sunscreen that you should be using. Um, also remember your ears, remember the back of your neck. Um, and oh my goodness, if you are outside doing yard work and your scalp <laughs> is exposed to the sun, maybe get a nice wide brimmed hat as well to protect your noggin because I know that there have been a couple times in my life where I have um, gotten a sunburn on my scalp. Doesn't feel good, also doesn't look good <laughs> as your scalp is flaking the couple weeks after the initial burn. So. Um, just make sure that you are protecting yourself adequately from the sun exposure um, and that you reapply as needed. So obviously when you're out in the pool or water, lake, river, ocean, whatever you swim in, make sure that you reapply. Most sunscreens for the body and for the face, mm, maybe not so much for the face. You might need to reapply there a little bit more often, but most of them they say up to 80 minutes. So just make sure that every couple hours you are getting out of the water and reapplying that sunscreen and letting it really sink into your skin um, before you head back into the water. This is a conversation that I have to have with my daughter every time we go to the pool because she thinks she can just put it on once and she's good to go. Doesn't work that way. And she has very fair skin like me. So 
we're not, this is not going to be the summer of the sunburn. So, um, also at the end of this video, I'm going to give you guys just a few quick tips. If you have oily skin that might help you with dealing with the oily skin and the SPF during the summer months. So, all right, let's get into it. I'm going to actually start with the flop that did not work for me that I purchased from Dermatology. If you'll remember back to my first video, if you watched it, there are two sunscreens from Dermatology that work incredibly well for me that are super affordable, especially if you buy them with the 20% off code that I have. I'll put that information down below if you want to try either of these. But they're Tinted Moisturizer SPF 46 and their Broad Spectrum SPF 45 work great for my oily skin. I have to be honest and say that the Broad Spectrum SPF 45, the like untinted one, is probably my favorite of the two, but these both work really well for me. Sometimes I'll even mix half and half, which is great. Um, but I purchased their new uh, Protect and Glow SPF 45, and I got mine in the light tint, and I tried that. You guys, that was a no-go for my oily skin. First off, within the first couple of hours of putting it on and like putting my makeup on and going about my day, everything was sliding off my face. Like it was just not a fit for my oily skin. So the type, either the types of sunscreens that they used in that particular formula or something else within the formula did not agree with my oily skin. So that one I actually passed along to my mom who oddly enough still has like kind of an oily T-zone in her older age. Um, but she's kind of dry everywhere else. And I gave it to her when she was here visiting uh, last weekend, I think it was, and it works great for her. So even with her like combination type skin, that particular SPF worked for her. But for me with my oily skin all over, no go. I think that this particular formula, the Protect and Glow, is honestly going to be the very best fit for those of you that have dry skin. Um, maybe even normal skin, but I would say dry skin. This particular one from Dermatology is going to be a good option for you. It does come in a light tint as well as a medium tint. I will say the light tint was a good fit for my pale, pasty skin, um, but that being said, uh, that one, no, not at all. So I, I would not recommend that one for those of you that are oily. Now let's talk sunscreens that uh, do work for my oily skin. Um, the City Beauty Skin Perfecting Daily Veil Sunscreen, uh, sunscreen, not scream, uh, SPF 39. Um, this is a titanium dioxide and zinc oxide um, SPF. So this is a um, a mineral sunscreen here. This one works great. In fact, this is what I have on my face today. I have been wearing this when I've been outside in my yard doing all of the plantings that we're currently um, putting in. And this has protected my face beautifully. Now, I'm also wearing a hat while I'm out there, so there's that. But I do think just in general, this provides some fantastic sun protection for me and it works great with my oily skin. So for me, this one will be a repurchase for sure. I do have a coupon code with City Beauty as well. I believe that one is for 25% off. So if you wanna purchase this particular SPF, I'll put the discount code and a link to it down below in the description box. But this one, definitely approved for me. This has one of those really kind of cool shade adjusting formulas, so it looks um, it's not white, it's actually nude colored, but it adjusts with your skin's like unique tone and um, it doesn't ever look pasty or white or pale. So no matter what your skin color, this particular one is supposed to work. So it's not supposed to leave a white cast on your skin. Bonus points here is that this makes my pores look extremely smooth. And if you're a large pored girl like me, you like stuff like that. So this one almost acts as a primer and an SPF for me, which is great. Um, the second one is um, the Ava Issa Sun E Serum Drops. Now this is a 25% zinc oxide and this provides UVA, UVE, broad, 
UVB, sorry, broad spectrum SPF 35. Now this is very different from any other sunscreen that I've ever used because it's in a serum format. And at first I was like, I don't know how I feel about this, but one, great for my oily skin. Like nothing pokes through when I'm wearing this one. Um, and two, I do actually like the way that this applies. Um, so I'm just gonna put a little bit on my hand here for you guys so you can see the texture of it. So you can see this one is, it's pretty white to start with. However, this does, once it blends into the skin, just leave a really nice silky feel to your skin. It dries down incredibly quickly. Um, I mean, honestly, like within seconds of like rubbing this into your skin, it almost feels like you never even put anything on which is great for oily skin because if you have that particular skin type, you know that things can feel very heavy on you. This absorbs so fast. Um, the only struggle that I have with this one is sometimes I have to like refill the pump or the pipette here um, a couple of times to get out the amount that I need. Um, this is also one that I like to mix with some of my other SPFs. So I'll put a couple drops of this one in with either of these two Dermatology or with my um, City Beauty SPF or my Paula's Choice. This, by the way, is hands down still my favorite. Um, but yeah. Uh, this mixes well with other SPFs as well. So if I feel like I'm gonna be really oily because it's like crazy hot out, I just put a couple drops of this in with another SPF and it almost creates like an amazing primer for my oily skin. Here's one of the tips that I'm just gonna plug in here because it makes sense right now. With my oily skin, I have found that Mineral sunscreen, specifically zinc oxide sunscreen formulations are the best for my oily skin. If you deal with any type of oiliness in your T-zone or all over your face like I do, look into some zinc oxide options. They are going to work so much better with oily skin then I feel like any other type of um, sunscreen ingredient has in the past. So um, if you haven't tried zinc oxide, give that a whirl. That might be just enough to keep your oil at bay and make your skin look a lot less shiny during the hot summer months. So um, the very last thing that I have been testing that I wanted to tell you guys about in this video is another touch-up product, which I think is very important. Obviously, when we um, go out with our makeup, everything done throughout the day, it's really hard to reapply, especially if you don't like the sunscreen sprays, which, um, you know, I've mentioned that this uncomplicated SPF 50 is a great one for me to touch up with when I'm working weddings normally. Um, if you don't like something like this, um, these uh, color science sunscreen, like brush on sunscreens are great to just pop into your purse. And they recently came out with the Total Protection Sheer Matte uh, 30 sunscreen brush on SPF. So this has zinc oxide in a 22.5% concentration. And these are fantastic because so you take a little cap off and then you have a brush and you essentially just brush this all over your face to touch up. So you are able to, you can kind of see it poofing out there a little bit, um, but you're able to touch up on the go. Now, the thing that you want to remember to do, which I did not do before doing this and I'm kind of regretting now that I'm looking at the brush is you do want to blot your face a little bit first just to get up a little bit of that excess oil um, because these brushes are not super easy to clean and admittedly these are not the softest brushes um, they are not really intended to necessarily last a long time it's just while you're using the product in here one thing I've heard mentioned from someone in a comment, it was actually just recently, they say that they have um, a struggle getting the actual product to come through the brush. 
I've never had that issue. If you have that issue with these uh, Color Science brush on products, definitely reach out to Color Science and let them know. I know that they have really good customer service, so they might be willing to replace it for you or give you some tips or tricks on how to get the product flowing out properly. But here's my other one. This is the SPF 50 brush on sunscreen. Now this has uh, titanium dioxide and zinc oxide in it, and this is in their shade medium, which works really well for me. So this one, you can see that it definitely comes out the top there. And again, it's another one where you just brush it on, but this one has a tint. What I like about this new formula here is this doesn't oxidize on me at all. When I put this on as an extra buffer at the beginning of the day, it doesn't oxidize on me. However, when I'm reapplying this after like being outside and maybe sweating a little bit and blotting, this does turn a little bit darker on my skin than I would prefer it to, which is why I was so excited when they came out with this basically translucent formula here. So um, this one's fantastic. Another option if you would just like to brush this on your face without using the brush here, say that you have a brush with you that for on the go, you can actually, and this is very easy to do, I'm just tapping this to make sure that it's not on the lid here, but you can unscrew this top here and you can shake out a little bit of this into the palm of your hand and use a brush that you can then wash. It's probably a little bit more sanitary that way if it makes sense. Um, so just shake it into the palm of your hand, take your brush and brush it on that way. That way you maybe don't have to worry about the product not coming out of here um, and not having to worry about getting this gross, like if you accidentally forget to soak your oil away, if that makes sense. So this one's fantastic, you guys. Um, now this one is just an SPF 30, um, but again, it's gonna provide some great touch-up protection for throughout the day, which is super important. Um, now for just uh, another tip um, for when you are putting on your makeup during the summertime and you have oily skin, you do not want to put your primer on top of your SPF. Your SPF should kind of be your last step before you actually go in with your makeup. So put your primer into your last step of your skincare routine, if that makes sense. So the primer that I've been using lately that is fabulous for my oily skin is the No Problem Prime Essence from Touch and Soul. This is a really lightweight, clear primer that um, you don't need much of. Like this amount that I have here would actually be enough to do most of my face if you can see it there. This spreads, like, I mean, it, this like covers my entire hand and uh, then some. But this particular primer, just for my oily skin, keeps my skin looking fresher for so much longer. I have tried um, putting on my makeup with just the SPF, and that is definitely fine. Like, you don't necessarily need a primer, but I found that I get even longer wear out of my summertime makeup looks when I use this. Um, I've also used the uh, No Problem Priming Water, which is also great, but I have to admit that between the two, uh, this one here, the Prime Essence, is a better fit for my oily skin. Maybe if you are combination normal or even dry, this would be a better fit for you, but very oily girls, this is the one that you want. I'll link this down below as well. And then my last tip, I think I may have mentioned this in the original video, but if you normally wear liquid foundation and you're really oily during the summer months, maybe look into powder foundation. I have lots of videos on my channel where I talk about powder foundation, how I apply it. Um, you can very easily find those videos. Um, but I found that for oily skin, uh, a powder foundation is just a better fit, especially during the hot summer months. It's not going to melt off of your face the way that a lot of even like matte liquid foundations do. At least they have for me in the past. I don't know if it's just my skin, but liquid foundation just, I'm, I might as well not even put it on because it's going to end up like on my neck meat. <laughs> 
by the middle of the day, I'm not even kidding you, it just slides off and it separates around my nose. With powder foundation, I never ever have that issue. And um, I'm on this like personal crusade <laughs> to make powder foundation more of a thing because I just don't think enough people think to try it. And I just highly encourage you to maybe test something new. Um, Laura Geller Balance and Brighton, Wander Beauty Wanderlust Powder Foundation, the Urban Decay Stay Naked Powder Foundation is fantastic. There's so many awesome powder foundations out there. You just kind of have to find the right one for you and then figure out the best technique for application. You can certainly get a heavier coverage if that's what you're looking for by using a sponge. Um, but if you're just into like the lighter coverage like I am, just a regular, you know, brush, something like this or something like this is great for applying your powder foundation. Um, it just, it makes such a difference, you guys. I wouldn't stress it so much if I didn't think that it was like, an amazing thing for oily skin. So that being said, I'm going to leave it at that for now. I will certainly continue to test sunscreens over the next year. Hopefully by next summer I can do a video that has like all new sunscreens in it. I love being able to find options for you guys when you have a more difficult skin type like I do. Um, and hopefully this is helpful for you guys. So please subscribe if you are new. Um, remember to open that description box for all of the information on where to find all of these things. And I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.